Alright, a lot of people are asking about the Simpsons TV, and that's probably because it's fucking awesome. Also, a lot of people are asking me if I can make them one, and the answer is no, you get fucked. But I will show you how I made it, and then you can go ahead and make your own. Just Google the thing, you'll pretty quickly find links to the original creator's blog. But the problem is, unless you use the exact same components that he used, then you're really going to struggle. And in fact, I don't even think that you can buy the same screen that he used anymore. So that's going to make it tough. Also, getting your hands on a Raspberry Pi these days is pretty difficult. At least not without paying through the ass for it. I mean, take a look at some of these prices. It's fucking disgusting, man. I mean, this was supposed to be a cheap, fun $50 project, but it quickly blew out to about a $200 project. I wouldn't have even tackled this one if I didn't already have a Raspberry Pi 3 just sitting in a box of random electronic components. Anyway, if you don't have a Raspberry Pi, then eat a dick. If you do, then great. Uh, first thing you've got to do is go and buy one of the screens. Let's go on Amazon. Uh, the company that makes them is called Waveshare. They make good shit. Find one that's the, the screen size that you want, and then find the resolution that you want. I chose the 3.5 inch screen size because that's slightly bigger than the Raspberry Pi 3 that I used. Obviously, the higher the resolution, the better, but you've already sunk $150 on the Raspberry Pi, and this is the next most expensive component, so maybe you want to cheap out here. The next thing you're going to want to buy is a potentiometer, some push buttons, you need an SD card, some power connectors, you need a speaker and an audio amplifier that matches that speaker. And fuck it, while you're there, let's go ahead and buy a 3D printer too. Alright, now you got all that shit, uh, you gotta go download all the videos that you wanna put on this cocksucker, and then you gotta encode them so they match the resolution of your screen. Some fucking nerds recommended that I use this program called FFmpeg. Uh, yeah, sure it worked, but it wasn't very user-friendly, so I wouldn't really recommend using it. Then you gotta throw your operating system on your Raspberry Pi. So, I used one called Raspbian Buster Lite, because that's what the original creator of this project did, and I don't really know the difference between them all. Then, go back to the website where you bought the screen from. They're gonna give you a link to its instruction manual. And there, you're going to have to download the drivers for the screen and also uh, the configuration documents. you just got to copy and paste all that shit into the SD card for your Raspberry Pi. Then just plug and play. It's basically just Lego for adults. And power that shit up and uh, see if it works. If it looks like this, that means you've fucked it. You've probably opened up the wrong instruction manual for the wrong hardware. But if it looks like this, then you're good to go and it should work. Then you've got to connect to it and then you've got to do all this shit like update the operating system, enable the USB ports, enable the audio jack, enable the GPIO pins. I thought it was weird that all that stuff wasn't just automatically turned on and working for you, but whatever. Also, you can rotate the screen here too. Then go back to the original creator's blog and he's got a whole lot of shit that you just got to copy and paste in there that's going to do things like download scripts that randomly plays the Simpsons episodes and then also it's going to install the video player, shit like that. Alright, that's enough nerd stuff. Let's break some electronics. When getting the speaker and the audio amplifier, you've really got to keep in mind your power requirements. A lot of this stuff just runs off 5 volts or 3.3 volts. So you're really going to have to find the smallest speaker that you can. Um, like this one here is pretty good. Just, yeah, get that one. Then connect it all up using a breadboard just to test it. Uh, if you don't have a breadboard, then eat shit. So the original creator, he used a Raspberry Pi Zero and he used a pulse width modulation output uh, for the audio signal. I couldn't get that working myself, so I just did it my own way. So I took the stereo output from the Raspberry Pi and I soldered in a couple of resistors on each leg and then joined them at the end. Basically this makes it a mono uh, signal. Then that went into the input of my audio amplifier. Then the output went out to the potentiometer and that acts as the volume knob and then from there it goes to the speaker. 
That's definitely not the best way of doing it. I don't even think I had the right value resistors for that sort of job, but uh, it worked in the end. For your power button, you just gotta find a pin on the board which isn't being used by the screen, and then connect that to the switch and the other end of the switch to the ground on the board. Then you go back into the configuration file for your Raspberry Pi and tell it that when you do that, you want it to turn the backlight of the LCD screen on and off. So yeah, the Raspberry Pi is always running, always playing The Simpsons. The on and off button is only just controlling the screen. Solder all that shit together, power it up, see if you can get it working. If you can, great. Yeah. Then fire up that 3D printer I told you to buy. Uh, I used this purple filament by Polymaker. It looked fucking great. It was perfect for the job. Printed out flawlessly. Now if you check Thingiverse or Printables, there are lots of models for this project on there. Lots of remixes. So you should be right. I found one that was made for a 3.5 inch screen, so I got lucky. But it's actually not that great. But luckily for me, these people will not only upload the STL files, but maybe the Fusion 360 files, they might upload the STEP files as well. So then I can go and unfuck these hideous legs. Like seriously, how hard was that gun? Now you don't need to use supports. Print that shit, put it all together, see how it looks, make sure everything fits, keep testing that along the way. Ah, uh, anyway, I'm getting pretty fucking bored of making this video. Editing videos fucking sucks. Just glue that shit together, test it, and then just fucking put it all together and you'll be right. By ignoring them, you're selling out these children's futures. Oh, come on, Ed. No, we both know these children have no future. Prove me wrong, kids. Prove me wrong.